It's been almost a week since SLS took off and NASA has finally released the status of the launch pad following the Artemis 1 launch. It appears the launch pad got way more damage than expected, so how terribly destroyed is it really? Well, most importantly, how any of this will affect future launches of the SLS, which is supposed to send Americans back to the moon in just a few years. Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. On Monday, November 21st, the Orion spacecraft performed another burn to send the spacecraft close enough to the lunar surface to leverage the moon's gravity and pull the spacecraft around the moon into a distant retrograde lunar orbit. After collecting data from that propulsive maneuver, NASA officials held a briefing Monday evening, November 21st, to discuss Orion's powered flyby of the moon. Judd Freeling, Flight Director at NASA's Johnson Space Center said Orion's mission team members are giddy with the current performance they're seeing from the spacecraft after the flyby, which saw the spacecraft come within 80 miles of the lunar surface. Notably, the briefing also discussed the launch of the Artemis 1 mission Space Launch System rocket on November 16th. Mike Serafin, Artemis 1 mission manager at NASA headquarters, said the SLS rocket performed flawlessly during launch. Results were eye-watering, Seraphin said. The rocket performed and or exceeded expectations. Seraphin added that the kindler, gentler fueling procedure that was performed for the successful third launch attempt also produced the results mission managers expected, circumventing some of the issues that plagued previous attempts. Seraphin also discussed the damage that Launch Pad 39B at Kennedy Space Center suffered during the launch. While much of the damage was expected and similar to other launches, the 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust produced by the SLS vehicle's core stage and two solid rocket boosters literally blew doors in. The elevator system is not functioning at all right now, Seraphin said. We had the world's most powerful rocket and pressure basically blew the doors off the elevators. Seraphin said that a segment of RTV, the insulating caulking around the base of Orion that was damaged by Tropical Storm Nicole, was found in the infield surrounding the rocket. It's unclear whether it was stripped off during launch or previously ripped away by Nicole. A strip of that caulking damaged by the storm was a source of worry prior to launch, but mission managers determined it would not be a risk. Ask if any of the glitches seen so far would have resulted in changes in mission plan if this was a crewed flight. Seraphin says they have a lean forward strategy to taking risk on the flight, but no overall system failures. In the last episode, we reported that NASA seemed very intent on them not photographing the Artemis launch tower. And now with these preliminary reports about how messed up it seems to have gotten, you may know why. Honestly, that's only part of the story. A source within the agency said that damage to the launch pad exceeded mission management's expectation, and per his description, it sounds fairly severe. Elevator blast doors were blown right off, various pipes were broken, some large sheets of metal left laying around, the Reuters reporter noted in response to Space News' Jeff Faust, who on Friday summarized a NASA statement conceding that the launch pad's elevators weren't working because a pressure wave blew off the blast doors. Shortly after the launch, debris was seen falling off the rocket. Besides, many equipment and electronics cabinets had their doors blown open, exposing fragile contents to heat and blast effect. Seals and welds failed, allowing sound suppression and water to get into places where it should not be. An engineer who works on the elevators on that pad shared that they still have not found one of the doors or the door to the equipment room that faces away from the rocket plume. They figure it was blown out into the swamp beyond the pad perimeter fence that's over one-fourth of a mile away from the pad. And these are photos of the deck of the SLS mobile launcher. Anyway, I'm glad the doors landed in an unknown place and not into the liquid ox or hydrogen tanks nearby or some other expensive stuff. After Columbia, they said no more night launches. Oh well, because we would have never had that video evidence in the dark, but this may be what NASA wants. I don't know how much money NASA will need to restore these things, and now I'm also quite worried about the SpaceX Starship launch pad. Anyway, so that you don't get too stressed about the rocket launch pad, I'll show you what one looks like right after the space shuttle thunders off into space. Pad damage is not unusual. Called the post-launch inspection team, a team of engineers heads out to the launch pad to instantly appraise damage at the pad and look for debris. 
They look over every part of the launch complex, despite the fresh layer of exhaust residue left by the solid rocket booster. You see a lot of scorched metal, some bent, said Jeff Painter, who has seen launch pads after liftoffs for more than 20 years. Because the elevators are not working after launch, the engineers have to take the stairs all the way up the fixed service structure. There's definitely a chemical metallic smell, said Tom Carlin, who's been on the inspection team for two years. Wildlife trekking back in only adds to the surreal atmosphere, such as the time a group of piglets was heading to the launch pad surface at the same time as the inspection team. Looking over the launch pad after a shuttle liftoff used to be akin to developing a catalog of destruction. Melted speakers would wrap around poles or columns in the launch tower, drink containers tucked away and forgotten would be jarred loose and strewn about, and a few tools like wire brushes would be found on the launch pad or in the blast zone. Things have changed though, and now far fewer things are left behind to be tossed around in the exhaust of a launching shuttle's 7 million pounds of flame and turbulence. There's still the occasional melted speaker, however. Earl Linderman, who leads the post-launch team, said the group found no left-behind items at the launch pad after Endeavour climbed into orbit for the STS-127 mission. That was a first for the space shuttle program. There were a few items that were blasted loose by the exhaust. Each of the engineers knows a specific area of the pad and evaluates the area closed during the inspection. When it's finished, they can offer a conclusive report of what items broke loose, what should be replaced or moved to a different part of the pad, and what damaged parts of the pad incurred, such as the hold-down posts that connect the boosters to the launch platform. The inspections are so detailed in part because the information will go back to more than 35 organizations, directorates, and companies that can't go out and look at the launch pad firsthand with a team. The team itself is made up of engineers from NASA, United Space Alliance, Boeing, and Lockheed Martin. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Hey, don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section. Your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.